welcome to Ask an Expert. I'm Suzanne Hepburn. Learning new ways of building is essential for us to create a sustainable way of life in Greater Vancouver. Efficiencies in design can reduce energy use and increase the health of buildings. Sometimes, though, we need to look to the past in order to realize the future, which is why I'm here at Stanley Park, where a very old technology is being reinterpreted for our climate. It's called COP, and Christy Tatabee is a project coordinator. Hi, Christy. Hi, Suzanne. So who are you people? Well, we're the Stanley Park Ecology Society, and we exist to connect people with nature. And we do that by offering a variety of different edu educational programs to the public and uh, by furthering sustainability here in Stanley Park. Our latest project that we're really excited about is our new popcorn stand uh, built out of cob. What is cob? Cob is a mixture of clay, sand, and straw. Basically, it's a type of earthen building that's been used for centuries and originated in Britain. And uh, it's just starting to get a revival here in North America. So it's an entirely sustainable method of building. Where did the idea to build this with cob come from? Well, the Ecology Society needed a new popcorn stand, and they decided because of the high traffic location in Stanley Park here that it would be a great opportunity to, um, to build a sustainable demonstration building. And so we thought, well, why not cob? It's uh, something that's just starting to catch on, and not many people know about it. Oh, wow, it's lovely. Yeah, it's quite, quite unique. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Now, the walls look really thick. Why is that? Well, for a number of reasons. One, um, structurally, they have to hold up the load of the roof, which is going to be a planted green roof, so it's going to be about two tons, so that's quite a lot of force. So uh, they're, they're thick to support that. As well, um, they, Cobb has a really high thermal mass, mm -hmm. so um, they'll absorb heat during the day and release it back in the evening, which keeps the interior temperature really constant. You mentioned a living rooftop. What, what is that? Um, a living roof is actually a roof that's planted with native vegetation. So it's kind of like a rooftop garden, except uh, a people don't go on it, and it, it's basically a living ecosystem on the roof. And uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it looks nice. It's, it creates a really beautiful, interesting-looking building. Um, secondly, it keeps the heat down in the summer, so the plants absorb a lot of the heat and use it for photosynthesis and that. It also actually stops a lot of the rainwater runoff. How would a cob house hold up under a lot of rain. No, everybody asks that, um, of course, obviously, because in Vancouver we get a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. uh, the British have a saying that if you give a building a good hat and good boots, it'll last for a lifetime. And uh, so in Britain there's buildings that have good stone foundations and large roof overhangs, and they tend to last hundreds and hundreds of years. What about the other big preoccupation of Vancouverites, the earthquake situation? We live in a really earthquake-prone environment, so how does Cobb hold up under that? Right. Well, let's go have a look. Okay. We're here at UBC Civil and Mechanical Engineering, and uh, I'll show you the facility that we use to test these structures. It's basically a big hydraulic shake table that simulates an earthquake. So we construct a model and put it onto the table and then shake it around and see how it does. So let's go see that. So this is the UBC Earthquake Engineering Laboratory, and uh, they're doing a test right now. This is uh, the recording data, actually, from the sensors that are on the roof forces and uh, this earthquake that they're putting it through right now is actually about a magnitude 7.2 on the Richter scale and it was um, a quake that happened in the Mojave Desert in California. Um, just for some reference, the big one that they're expecting here in Vancouver is going to be about a 9. So this one here is about uh, 7. It's a little shallower and closer to the surface so it's a bit different than what we can expect up here. But uh, it gives us a bit of an idea how Cobb might perform in there. Similar sort of thing, yeah. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of people here that have helped build the model for us, and uh, they really were interested to see how it was going to perform. Everyone's put a lot of themselves into this. Um, there's also the gentleman in the purple shirt. That's Dr. Carlos Ventura of UBC Civil Engineering, and uh, he's graciously donated the lab and his time and all of his staff for this. So we're really, really appreciative of that. We're going to switch now to uh, a different type of earthquake that is going to shake the house more severe. That's about 2G of acceleration there. Right? 2G, is that typical of a quake? That's a very extreme level of shaking. We have seen that 2G is in certain earthquakes, so it's not unusual to see that but very extreme, right? And, uh, uh, and we're going to see two Gs here in, in BC. Very unlikely. It's possible, but very That's unlikely. Right? Yeah. That's why we run the first earthquake, which is more, a more likely earthquake to happen. Wow, so that was pretty encouraging. That was pretty extreme shaking that it withstood, so that's good to see. Yeah, right. let's head back to Stanley Park. 
Wow, that was really fascinating, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> so the house back there was quite a bit different than this. Why is that? Yeah, uh, well, this hasn't got the exterior plaster on it yet. There will be a finishing plaster on it, so it'll be uh, all smooth. You won't see these little bits of straw sticking out. How practical is cob as a building material? I think it's really practical, actually. It's very low cost if you can find the materials locally. Um, and the only downside is probably the labor involved. Um, we've mixed all of the cob mix that went into this building by foot in small batches. Actually, all there's no machinery involved. If you have a lot of friends, uh, it can be, be pretty practical, actually. So who did build this house? Well, we had about 200 community volunteers that came out to help us build this, which was really amazing. Um, they ranged from student groups to families, grandparents. Um, we also had a team of at-risk youth that were employed with us by the Environmental Youth Alliance, and uh, they spent their summer building this as their summer job as well. So it was a real community project. Is Cobb up to building code? Uh, right now it's not. We're working with the city to develop building code. Um, this building, because it's less than 100 square feet, is okay because it doesn't need to be permitted. But um, we're hoping that the results of the earthquake test that we saw today will actually help inform um, and develop a building code with the city. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our look at Cobb. It might be coming to a neighborhood near you. If you've got a question you'd like an expert to answer or somewhere you've always wondered about, please give us a call at 604-436-6794 or you can email us at livableregion at gvrd.bc.ca. You can also check out the GVRD website to find out more about sustainable building practices.